Hello, this is Father Rich coming to you from the uh, mausoleum at Calvary Cemetery in Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, this is actually the cemetery where my grandparents and my mother are uh, buried, and my, uh, my actual grave is here um, in preparation. But this is the mausoleum, and it's the, the thing we have that would be the closest to what we're going to look at for our first masterpiece, which is pa the paintings in the Roman catacombs. Um, and one thing I failed to mention in the introduction of this going through the 75 masterpieces every Christian should know is that they are going to go in order of history. So this is the oldest art form that we are going to look at. It's from the probably the, you know, anywhere from the 2nd to 3rd, 4th uh, centuries. The, the artwork that were found in the catacombs, these were the burial places for all Romans, not just Christians. And, um, and we here see a great image of the uh, resurrected Christ, kind of with the, the fire coming from behind him, and we can see him rising, a, a symbol of hope. And that was what this early Christian art was. Um, and typically very kind of simple artwork compared to later uh, developments, very influenced by the Roman and Greek classical art forms and styles. Um, didn't see a lot of crucifixion or cross representation in this time period, but more the symbols of resurrection. One of the things was they couldn't be that blatant about their, the Christian symbols, so they had to be more subtle. And the cross of the crucifixion would have been more blatant, but they also were kind of developing that spirituality of the cross. Um, because remember, for the first 300 years or so of our history as a church, it was illegal to be Christian, really until 313 AD, when uh, the Emperor Constantine finally legalized Christianity, and so we would see the movement away from this, or the first kind of chapter of the Christian church, which was persecution and martyrdom. Um, so the catacombs were for the people that didn't have land, and so many people were buried there. They say in Rome, probably between four and six and a half million um, tombs or buried people buried in the catacombs there. There are probably five or six that are very famous saints. Uh, Callistus is probably the most famous and well-known, but St. Sebastian, uh, Domitilla, a lot of the different um, catacombs in Rome. Um, I was blessed to study in Rome, so we had a chance to actually go and visit the catacombs and have mass down there. They mentioned in the book here, and again, this is not a Catholic author, that the, you know, there is some um, misunderstanding that the catacombs were where the Christians went to hide. And, and we certainly would reaffirm that, that that wasn't the case. But they said they also didn't go down there to worship, which I would, I would um, beg to differ because we know um, St. Sixtus II in the mid 200s, uh, he was actually found celebrating a mass and with some, uh, a group of faithful people, Christians, and he was executed uh, with four deacons. And then two deacons would be executed later that day. So we do know that they did uh, have mass down there. But the more popular thing for them, the people of that time was to just go visit their loved ones who had died there. They would have this funerary, funerary uh, meal with them. And sometimes they would even like pour wine down into their, into their tomb or their grave um, as a way, this kind of idea of this banquet uh, that was a way to continue life with our deceased, with their deceased uh, relatives. But one of the most popular images of the catacombs was Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And of course, we remember John chapter 10, Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd, and talked about knowing his voice. Because this would be an image of comfort, of offering protection. And obviously, in that early church history, there were a lot of predators that were after the them. And so it was a comforting symbol to have a shepherd who would protect you, who would care for you. And so we actually see uh, one of those pictures in, the, in this chapter that um, is in the book. Um, so we would have common symbols of resurrection, things like a peacocks, phoenixes, doves, palms, uh, and again, not, uh, no crosses or crucifixes, symbols of hope. There were uh, depictions of the Old Testament stories, people that were delivered, and, and obviously as the people that were buried there, the Christian expression of hope that they would be delivered from death. Um, so stories that would be represented in the artwork like Jonah and, um, you know, the Daniel, the Daniel in the Den of the Lions, uh, the three men that were thrown in the furnace of Daniel, um, Noah and the Ark, 
those kind of uh, depictions. Also very popular were the lives, the life of Christ, and uh, particularly his miracles and his healings would be were common um, subjects for the artwork there in the catacombs. So really um, some great stuff of this early Christian art that you can't underappreciate. It was very simple because obviously they were going down in the dark trying to put the things there. And again, they didn't want to make a big show of it uh, to bring attention to the Christianity connected with these things. The last paragraph I want to read because I think it's a great summary of the author again from Terry Glaspy. In the generations that followed, Christian art would begin to become more grand and showy, striving for splendor and a highly aesthetic effect. The earliest Christian art, however, with its greater simplicity and obvious devotion, remains a powerful testimony to the way that art could reflect deep faith and trust in God, even at a time of great persecution. Despite the threat of death, early Christians held fast to a faith in God who was a deliverer and who would ultimately snatch them, even from the jaws of death. That message echoes out from the Roman catacombs. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, tomorrow we will, now again, it's not tomorrow. Uh, we're doing three videos a week, so I apologize I said that in the intro. So probably two days from now, we're going to try to do them on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays each, each week. Our next uh, subject will be the Book of Kells um, from Ireland. So we look forward to that from the 6th century. Have a great day and God bless.